hello again uh it's anonymous alligator back with it again uh, it's been a little while but uh trust me it's been good you know good things are coming lots of lots of new stuff uh, <laughs> just been a little bit busy so uh as promised several times we're going over the box today now if you don't know what the box is um this is my Portable, well, not a portable Tetra cell. That's the other smaller box, which you will see once I actually finish making it the way I want to. And it's not messy. Um, but this is a deployable Tetra cell um, or DTC, but I'm not good at acronyms. So if you have something better, let me know. So it's literally just a Pelican case um, that's been hollowed out. I've got about, not counting this one, I've got 11 of them. They all came with foam. If you're going to do this, don't get ones with foam. It's not worth the little bit of extra money you save. I got hives all up and down my arm, so not worth it. Um, you know, on the outside, just normal Pelican case, asset tag uh, for the network. Um, basically, you know, kind of tells you what it is the ISI of the audio link radio if this is a or it lists all of them um, if it has more than one link audio link radio not data data is standardized that's 9999 but audio then it will only list the main one for talk group one or whatever is considered the main talk group for that repeater um, has the repeater IC if that's not if it's not acting as a data gateway which most will um, that will be 9999 it's got APRS and internet linking um, down at the bottom just has MCC MNC IC and the name of the kit all right so what's on the inside a mess that's what's on the inside um, as you can probably tell very work in progress <laughs> um, so main components we got regular just Astron power supply is gonna get replaced out with a more smaller power supply for test for once I'm done testing because I kind of need all my Astron power supplies not locked in a box <laughs> Um, we've got a huge mess of cables here. This is going to be where a CDM 750 is going to go for um, just remote uh, control because I don't really trust the internet a lot, uh, especially with some of the locations we'll be putting these. I'm not going to be able to trust it um, for anything more than you know what I need it for. Um, we've got a Raspberry Pi running as the site controller for right now. Um, I'm gonna have a few more of these, probably the smaller ones, because I don't need a full fat Pi 3B. Well, Pi 3B plus, long name. Um, and you got the signal link for the one audio link radio that's in here. Um, it's gonna be adding more. There's a way I can get up to, I think it was either five, seven or five linked talk groups with this. Um, so there's a way I'm working on getting that done. And you got the data cable for the Sapira, which is acting as the repeater and data gateway. Um, just regular programming cable, and then RS-232 to USB, and then that plugs into the rear. Um, this is the coax connector for the audio link radio. That's just going to be ran to a dummy load in the actual, you know, once it's fully done, but have it ran to an outside antenna for right now. And then we've got the coax connector for the actual um, repeater. Now, what's underneath, or what's inside, but that's not the name of the YouTube channel. What's inside, don't sue me. All right, now if we lift up this plate without unplugging the Raspberry Pi, we've got two radios down there. You can see that gray one kind of off on the side. Uh, wish I had a flashlight. <laughs> Um, that's going to be the data, uh, that one right there, that's the data and the repeater radio. Um, it's a SRG3900UW, 
without the extra U, if you know my call sign, then you'll get that joke. Um, then this one right here is a Motorola MTM 800 acting as the actual audio link radio for right now. Um, that's going to get swapped out with a bunch of smaller radios so I can pack more into here. So, what's with all the extra connectors? Well, for one, this isn't done yet, so I've still got the Pi running off of wall power. Um, you've got the one power cable coming in. you got two coax connectors going out because that's needed. And then you've got, I think it's, yeah, it's this one. You got this one, just for the control head. Um, if you saw before, don't know if I post anything about it, but I used to be running the old uh, SRM2000 uh, mono control heads. They've since upgraded. Hope you guys like the uh, new one. Yeah, there you go. This is the Superior Color Console 3. I really love the look of these. Um, Whenever I get my new vehicle, uh, it's going to be a Taurus. Uh, police Interceptor, of course, because I've got the extra space for radios. Uh, I'm going to get the Color Console 3, which is a little bit different than this, but same same dev. Um, but yeah, no, these are really great units that I, I love the look of so far. Uh, they operate great, uh, minus the ancient uh, <laughs> mic I'm using. This is from a... It's like an SRP or something. It's one of the older radios from like 90s, 2000s, somewhere from there. So, let's hear it in action, because as you probably all remember from my um, DMR crosslink, there's a really kind of annoying clicking sound. Well, let's turn all this down. As you'll be sad to find out, the signal link uses physical relays, not solid state. So thus, oh, hang on, I forgot that they, <sighs> signal link doesn't work in that way. I need this one. So yeah, you hear the, yeah, you hear that click in there. Hang on, let's get it. Open it closer. Yeah, eh, it's not overly loud, especially whenever you got this closed. Oh, and yes, I'm not insane. I do have fans back here, and they are getting plenty of cooling. I've ran this thing linked to Talk Group 91 through a few Magic Voodoo methods, um, and it worked, you know, it did not get hot at all, even with the lid closed. I'm not an idiot. I know radios need cooling. Just gonna have to trust me on this. <laughs> I mean, they're expensive. They're they're somewhat expensive. Um, so far, the cost of this with just the two radios and all the linking equipment is about three hundred bucks. So, yeah, not great, not terrible. <laughs> Probably gonna be closer to five hundred once you get all the radios in there. So, there's that. Um, right now, I have it linked into uh, the November five Tango Tango repeater through Echo Link. Um, so, yeah, if you ever hop on Echo Link, uh, either look for November 5 Tango Tango or November 5 UWU dash R. Um, dash L will pop up every once in a while. That's the reflector I'm working on for US Tetra. Don't go there. So, what can this do? Well, take a little look see. Hang on. So, I can send uh, status messages control it through, you know, control what it links to through Echo Link. Uh, these can be set to anything, but I just have them fixed to KE5RS and November 5 Tango Tango. Um, these are the different talkers within the Tetra network. Control whether or not, you know, it gives me weather report, pair it on, pair it off, and then these are all just for talking to other radios. Um, you can also, using a command like this, send DAPnet messages or pages. Um, you can also receive pages. I wonder if I have any of those in here. Oh, there we go. So that's 
a received page from DAPNet going through here. It says the call sign followed by the message. And then if you ever power on, uh, ignore if you have powered on, you have powered off messages. Those are getting fixed. There's a bug in the software. That's getting fixed though. But if you ever power on and you're within range of a cell and it's your first time, you get this wonderful little message, you know. Good job. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, APRS is almost working. Um, just sorting out a little bug with uh, sending data to APRS phi. But uh, other than that, almost working fully. So what are my plans? Um, I'm going to have basically three models of repeater kit. The portable Tetra cell, which you will see later. The deployable Tetra cell, this, this is more built for like Aries, whereas the portable Tetra cell is really, it's not meant to be linked. It's more for like a small event, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, these are meant to be linked together in, uh, well, not a bunch of them, but they're meant to be linked for, you know, wide area networks, quickly setting them up, so quickly you know, tearing them down. So uh, like uh, Dayton Hampfest. I'm working with those guys. We might be putting one of these up there for the event. Well, maybe a few of these. <laughs> um, but these are more meant for like Aries groups. And then I've got a rack mount version I'm working on. Uh, I'm just waiting for the actual rack mount case to get here through Amazon. But sadly, UPS doesn't understand the difference between East Whitestone and West Whitestone. So it's currently on West Whitestone. I need it on East. Thanks, UPS. Never using you again if I try. So, um, in other news, IDEN's coming back, baby, or at least, uh, direct, well, yeah, direct talk, or, yeah, direct talk, there we go, um, moto talk, there we go, let's just call it that, everyone knows what that is. Um, I'm going to be setting up also a linked network for direct talk in central Texas. Uh, well, mainly central Austin and the kind of Cedar Park area. If you don't know where those are, probably doesn't apply to you. But uh, yeah, no, it'll be simplex just due to how this works, so you know. Key up, say what we need to do. Oh, that was too loud. Yeah, you know, key up, say what you need, let go. It's gonna repeat it back for everybody to hear, but um, should work just fine. I mean, so far these have really great coverage, um, especially in my area. Just I expect they're probably going to do well in Austin just because they're 900 megahertz. Um, but odds are I'll probably be because I mean the repeaters for the simplex repeater for this could literally just be this, you know, a radio like this connected through the accessory connector to a crappy Amazon simplex repeater controller. And then you also need a second, you know, can be same radio model or a smaller one, um, just to trick it to not doing this. And always having a user available because this blocks you from transmitting for 10 seconds, which don't want because, I mean, say you just dip out of coverage and now you've missed the whole conversation because it just kills it. So don't want that. Um, I'm working on looking into the legalities of linking an ISM band device to part 97. Um, if that works out well, you'll see a new uh, node pop up on my reflector, and it will be called uh, IDEN link. So that way you get access to both networks. So that'll be cool. So yeah. Um, as always, email me or you know, comment below if you have any questions, and I'll try my best to answer them. Anonymous Alligator, out.